Am I going to be looking at somebody? Mm -mm. Okay. All right, Harry, go ahead and start us off. Hey, Mo, Harry Mack from the Bookie's Basement. How are you? I'm doing excellent. And you? Love to hear it. Doing, doing good myself. So after a big finish in your first fight, you now find yourself in second place in those heavyweight standings. So I guess simple enough, what's the path from, from here to Mo Green being a millionaire? Winning. Um, <laughs> if i got to be completely honest with you, uh, just winning. Winning a fight, that's the path. Every time we take it one fight at a time, um, I know I'm fighting the 2022 champion, but at the end of the day, we're only halfway there. So um, what would Kobe say? Job's not done, right? So I'll celebrate and be happy when the job is done. And we're, we're only hitting the halfway mark with the win over uh, Andre. There you go. And so people have kind of talked a lot about how a, a lot of guys who have come over from the UFC to the PFL have struggled in their, in their first couple of fights. So how does it feel to kind of buck that trend a little bit? Um. That's only one, you know, it was only, I'm, I'm one and one in the PFL. I got three fights to continue to prove myself and show the world what I'm really made of. Uh, it feels great to get a win. Um, it feels even better to be able to go back after the win and get right back to it uh, and be a little bit stronger, a little bit faster, a little bit sharper for this one. So uh, those struggles are, are, are in my past, you know, I'm sure I'll face some adversity, but you know, I'll, I will outdog the dog in uh, in Andre. Got you. And so, w would you to win that that PFL championship and that million dollars? Would we see a, a crochet PFL world championship belt from you? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like it's going to take too long to do. Uh, <laughs> but what you you'll see some T-shirts. You'll see a tattoo right here that say "Have the PFL world champion." And then on my left shoulder, if you know what's there, it's going to say third place. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And and last for me, just before we started here, you, you asked if you should rap. I would personally love to hear a Mo Green rap. I don't rap. I crochet. Oh, I see. I, see. I, I was just joking. And if I was the rap, I would just rap some of my homies Billas, Billas rap and, or my boy JC. And um, that could be like a copyright infringement. So. <laughs> Um, I, I don't want to start that trend with you guys. <laughs> Set the wrong expectations of who I'm about or what I'm about. So, of course, that's that's just good business. Well, thank you very much for your time, Mo. Best of skill. Hey, thank you. Have a wonderful day. Oh, wait, hold on. I will let me point out. Take notes, everybody. He said something that some irks me. When people say, "Good luck, motherfucker." We don't get luck. We spend a lot of time in the gym. He said, best of skill. I appreciate that. All right, Mills. What's up, Maurice? How are you doing today? MMA locker room part of Puff Sports Radio. Man, I'm excellent. I'm excellent. Yourself? Man, I'm doing good, man. Black excellence is definitely on the rise. You did. All right, all right. With that being said, man, I heard something that you just spoke on. You know, you said you're going to outdog the dog. Now, hear me out. All right. Brandon Lofney just lost last week. You know, former former champion, big, big favorite. Kayla Harrison lost last year, you know, big favorite, former Hello, champion. Lisa. All right. So I need to know now, when you went and got your physicals and you got your checkups, when you got that x-ray, did that x-ray show the dog in you? Nah. I didn't see a dog. I just saw a strong motherfucker who was ready to fight. For sure. How about that? I, I'll take that. I'll take that. I mean, I'll take that and run with it. So. One no dog inside of me. I'm a cat guy. You know, I'm a crazy cat nigga. So, you know, I'm a feisty cat. That's what you got. You got the feisty cat in me. Got it. Got it. Nine lives. So with that being said, man, you didn't have plenty of fights in the UFC, you know, you always like to use your elbows, you know, when you're in the clinch, how has that been uh, in the PFL cage to where you can't use your elbows and adapt into it? I got knees. Okay. I got, okay. I got, got knees. Got it. So the knees been getting it done for you. So, so what's the plan then? Let me know the plan, man. You're the main event right now. Last time in the PFL cage, you had John Jones in your corner. Is he going to have John Jones in your corner for the, you, I guess you guys gonna have to wait and see if he if he's here or not. Guess you gonna have to wait and see. I don't even know. Um, you know, um, 
I got a strong team. I got a strong group of guys around me and uh, the work is done. The work has been done. Um, and it's, there ain't nothing to it but to do it. Love it, man. Love the energy, man. Uh, hey, I ain't going to say good luck. Let's see your skills on this uh, week. I appreciate you. Thank you. Anique. Maurice, nice to meet you. Um, Anique Subramanian, Fightbook MMA. If you were to beat the defending champion on Friday, would you consider yourself the champion? When? When? On Friday. When I beat the champion. When? It's not an if, it's a when. And no, I don't consider myself the champion. He was a champion last year. He submitted in history as a champion last year. I'm going to earn my keep this year for 2023. That being said, we're only halfway there to the goal. I still got two fights left. Awesome. And you've been training partners with John Jones for many years. What's the biggest lesson you've learned from him? And will he be in your corner Friday night? You're going to have to see if he'll be there. And um, the biggest lesson I learned, man, just being being able to be side by side with him through this whole process, you know, a camp and a half, really. Um, I just saw his process. You know, as we got closer to the fight, I saw his mental. I saw his processes he went through. Some things that, you know, not everybody gets to see. And I, and I was one of the guys along with some of the, some of our other training partners who've been putting the work in, uh, in a small group of, uh, great, you know, great heavyweight men that we got. Um, and we, and we saw him change and we saw, um, him go out and, and conquer, even though everybody thought zero gum was this and that he demolished him, he finished him. And, uh, I have confidence in knowing that, um, even if I, even if a little bit of that rubs off, rubs rubs off on me as it has, I'm fucking all these guys up. Awesome! Excited to see you fight on Friday. Thank you so much. You have a good day. You too, Gavin. Uh, hi, Maurice. Uh, since you're you the doing? main event, I'm good. Since you're the main event, you'll know how many points everyone else ends on. Will your game plan change? Say it one more time. Happening? Since you're the main event, you'll know how many points everyone else has. Will your game plan change depending on the results? I mean, if I need more than a win, then yes. But I need a win and I'm in. I need three points and I clinch. Three points. I need to win a fight. Another thing that you often talk about on social media is your acting career. If you win a million dollars, will you try and focus on the acting career more because you wanted to worry on the financial side? Um, it's hard to make that decision right now. Um, probably not, you know, when I win the million dollars, um, the first person I'm going to call out is Francis Ngannou, because that's what makes sense at that point in time. Um, and then I'll prepare for Francis with John. Um, and you know, we'll hopefully see that happen. But right now I'm just focused on Andre and getting through Andre and then uh, going to Madison Square Garden back home in New York uh, for the playoffs. That's it, man. I, I try not to look ahead of and think about, well, this could happen in that because the reality is if you don't win the next fight, you don't make the playoffs. You don't make the playoffs, you don't get an opportunity at the championship. You don't win the championship, there's no Francis Ngannou fight. So um, I'm just focused on the task at hand, taking it one fight at a time and enjoying the journey with the PFL. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Uh, Corey. I'm uh, Corey from Tunnel Vision Sports here. How are you doing today? What's cracking? I'm good, baby. Awesome to hear that. Um, I was wondering how the um, being in the Ultimate Fighter, that, that kind of tournament style schedule, how that kind of compares to the uh, PFL schedule that you've uh, been fighting on. Doesn't even compare. Ultimate Fighter is way different from the PFL. You fight like, you fight like I fought two times in fucking six weeks, you know? Um, but it does compare to where you have to stay healthy. You have to train smart. Uh, the Ultimate Fighter, I think, it differs from the PFL because you got the, the mental aspect as in you can't talk to friends, family, your loved ones. You don't talk to your training partners, teammates. I was lucky enough to build a really good relationship with some of my teammates on the show, which transferred off the show. So uh, that was pretty cool. But this process has its own set of um, obstacles, as you call it. And uh, I think, 
you know, it's one of those things where the strongest survives, you know, this is a, a game of, is, is the right word? Game of attrition. Is that the right word? Maybe. I don't know, but this is a game of just outlasting and being able to stay strong and keeping that mind just ironclad. You know, there's nothing physical that I can do. Even going training at night, there's nothing physical I can do. The work is done. Everything that can change is mental. So, um, I'm building that mental, you know, that mental, that mental block is getting stronger and stronger and stronger every day. Every day we come down here, I look at them, I see them and, um, yeah, my hands are are, are kind of like getting clammy right now, just thinking about what Friday night's going to look like and looking at him, looking at me on the other side of the cage with his weathered ass face because the motherfucker look old. So, um, yeah, man, I'm excited. I just, I just, you know, he thinks he's about to come back here and get back in this tournament. He got me fucked up. Or, okay, I, uh, what was the, <laughs> what's the, <laughs> what's the, uh, <laughs> oh, What's the white person version that you got me fucked up? News flash, buddy. <laughs> it's not going to happen today. <laughs> Sorry. I saw a meme and that shit made me laugh. Go ahead. <laughs> That's all for me today. Thank you so much. You're the man. I uh, look forward to seeing you perform on Friday night. Hey, thank you so much. You have a wonderful day. Thanks for your time. All right. Marty. Hey, Maurice. How's it going, brother? Man, I'm doing awesome. Just taking it all in, staying focused, staying sharp. That's it. How about nice, you? Not, nice. I'm doing well. Thank you, sir. We we know Ant obviously likes he likes the power. He, he's got a few knockouts in his last recent fights. We know you've got rockouts on on your on your uh, on your record as well. Um, you're not going to give us your game plan, but. Are you going to entertain a stand-up striking fight with with him? What's and who do you think has the power advantage? Man, you know I can't give you that. I'm a win. At the end of the day, I'm a win. Um, I will tell you this. I really don't give a fuck what he has done. It really doesn't matter to me. Um, I have confidence in knowing I've done the work. I've been in the gym. I lifted the weights. I put on the, the size correctly. If you go back and look at me in this arena last year, I weighed in at 238 pounds. I came in on short notice. A lot of you don't know I lost 10 pounds during fight week, okay? And I gave Goltz off a hell of a time. Even though he was on, he was tired. You know, he beat Goltz off, okay? He beat Goltz off because he outdogged Goltz off. That's what happened. He has that dog in him. He out dog goats off. What do you do when I know what you're going to do? I know what you want to do and you can't fucking do it. What are you going to do? And we're going to see on Friday, you know, um, I don't like to talk too much shit. I just have confidence in the body of work that I, that we've put in with uh, from John to the coaches to the fucking all the heavyweights that are in the room with us, uh, that work with us, that are that are just been dedicated to each other for so long. Um, I just I don't care that he's the champion. You know, I'm coming in here like I'm the champion, and uh, it's a championship mindset. And I, I'm just gonna keep proving all you fucking doubters wrong. That's it. Love that. Love that. And the last one from me. How how is it with yourself and obviously your buddy Jorgen on the same on the same card? Do you enjoy being on the same card as your as your training partners? Yeah, yeah. Your me and Jorgen is cool. I wouldn't. I mean, he came in for you know for a camp. He doesn't train with us full time. Full time. I'm talking about the guys that have been grinding with us for three straight years. Um, it just is what it is. If I got to be honest with you, like we we understand what this tournament brings, right? We 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 get what this tournament brings and. When you got friend people, I mean, everybody's cool. I mean, I'm cool with Andre. It's not like I, I hate the guy, you know? It's not like I don't like him. You know, we have families to fight for. We have kids. We have, you know, everybody wants a house. Everybody, you know, we want these nice things. So to get those nice things, in the words of fucking Marshawn Lynch, I got to run through a motherfucking face. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Look forward to seeing you on Friday. Thank you. All right, Maurice, thank you so much. Appreciate your time today. We'll yeah. <laughs>